Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavone. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, good to be here, everybody. Uh, how are you, man? <laughs> I'm good. You look a little frazzled, I gotta tell you. My <laughs> eyes started watering up and, like, getting dry at the same time. So do you, want, do like, you want an allergy pill? Uh, I, no, I think I'll be okay. Are you I, sure? I don't want to take any supplements today. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear you. Uh, <laughs> um, discombobulate or yeah. whatever it's called when you throw off. I think discombobulate. Yeah, that wasn't the word I was looking for. I'll go with it, though. It's a funny yeah, word. You would think of it, but you're discombobulated. <laughs> discombobulate should be the name of like a board game. <laughs> Discom- That's a killer board game name. Yeah, it's like a mixture of Boggle. And, yeah, uh, <laughs> they give you of all the pieces of different board games. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so you're like, how do we play this? I don't know. It's yeah. part of the fun. <laughs> it's like boggle, and then like you put the boggle pieces in one of those, you know, that thing that times down and it explodes. A bat- oh, the, made a- is that the trouble one? No, trouble's no. the bubble. It's called like uh, Matt Moose Bounds made a, made a logo for us. Oh no, that was uh, uh, J- Ed. 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 Uh, for, oh, and, yeah, of Jamie and Ed? Formerly of Jamie and Ed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Formerly, uh, yes. Yes. Um, Ed made that. But uh, Matt Moves Mountains made uh, the Ghost Rider Soul Cyclist. Soul Cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Oh, uh, we got to shout out the new Patreon. We do. We do have to shout out the new I, Patreon. I got his name. Perfect. Kevin Brown. Kevin Brown, thank you so much for being our latest Patreon member. Uh, we didn't get to shout you out in the Anthony DeVito episode because uh, it it was recorded before you joined. So thank yeah. you so much for joining the Patreon. Yeah, we don't know if you're a farmer, Farmer Brown, if you like brownies. Yeah, uh, brother. I wore my brown pants. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, they got brown later <laughs> for me. <laughs> Do you know that joke? No. Oh man. Well, I mean, that's the punchline. But the joke is uh, there was an enemy ship. There was a, like a like a ship of uh, sailors in the war, and uh, oh, okay. the guy in the crow's nest goes, uh, Captain, uh, there's an enemy ship on the horizon. Uh, he's like, bring me my red shirt. And uh, they win the battle, and uh, the guy in the crow's nest goes, why, why did you want the red shirt? And he's like, if I was to be shot and bleeding, you guys wouldn't know, and you would continue to fight on. And the next day, they're on the water. <laughs> Captain, 12 enemy ships on the horizon. Bring me my brown pants. Oh, my God. That is so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Wow, I love a good uh, history naval joke. I, you know, it, right up your alley. That, yeah. that joke was made for you. It's got poop. It's got <laughs> ships. It's history. <laughs> the guy shipped his pants. <laughs> shipped his pants. <laughs> Speaking of which, thanks for the coffee. Uh, yeah, yeah. We got the uh, panic attacking brand um, uh, raccoon mugs. Yes. That, that no one likes. I, mean, I like I it. Don't, I don't like them. Oh. <laughs> Are they not yours? Well, they were a gift uh, from uh, somebody. and uh, Who listens? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Thank God. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. So, uh, okay, cool. Well, we got a lot to talk about, first yes, of all. so much to talk about. You have been all over the the country, I believe. Yeah, you were going to say planet. Yes, planet. <laughs> Save the planet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was in Cincinnati. I did Go Bananas, uh, and it was truly a blast. Thank you, everyone that came out. I think we 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 picked up some listeners uh, from that. Oh, wow. Uh, that weekend. You got to be careful now. I like club. Uh, it might be bad branding. Yeah, well, it's because the, the monkey pox. It, <laughs> you want to go there, but if the club goes bad, they'll just make it a go bananas bread. But <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're back. Cool. Oh my god, this is our earliest in- interruption. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Where did we? Where do we pick up? So you uh, go bananas, banana bread. Oh yeah, monkey pox. Monkey pox. <laughs> banana bread's good with some butter. <laughs> but we got to get in the court. And so after that, you fly to. I went LA. to Los Angeles and uh, did the Late Late Show with uh, James Corden. Uh, thank you to every panic attacking listener that shared the uh, set. There's too many to thank. 
Uh, well, literally, it was a ton. My whole feed was uh, yeah, Panickers, Steve. Yeah, it meant meant a lot, and and uh, I I even saw uh some Panickers that couldn't find the set, and other Panickers sending it <sighs> to them. Oh my god, it meant so much. It was crazy and i can't thank everybody by name because i'm gonna forget somebody and feel bad so yeah. thank you everyone it'll just be like your album credits yes exactly thank you to everyone who's ever listened yeah and andrew chavone <laughs> yep <laughs> well uh and my parents texted me or called me yeah they were like steve was so good and i'd go i'm too nervous i haven't listened yet well it's on youtube <laughs> like i figured that i tweeted the link out that's how you saw it <laughs> but... <laughs> Oh man! You're, you're yeah, I know. I'm getting ready. Oh. I, I was I was debating about joking. Going, we're doing a good job setting each other up for the jokes that get removed <laughs> from the tech. <laughs> Hold on, set me up for my my other one. We say it again. Um, we saw it on on YouTube. Yeah, we saw it on this uh, website called Andrew Chavone's Twitter. <laughs> there, I think we got them all. All, all right. right, yeah. It's like if they texted me. You know it's on TV, right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they and it's on they're watching it on your TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you Andy and Deb. That means a lot. Hey, uh, they were impressed with the backstage stuff too. Oh yeah. What so, was that? What was that like? So uh you you asked me what it was like compared to my Colbert experience. And I have to say I and I'm very grateful for Colbert. After doing this, Colbert was perfect practice for a TV set. It did air on TV, yeah. but as most of you know, Colbert's not was not there. Right, yeah. And they filmed six comedians in a row. Yeah, it was like a stand-up showcase. Yes. Sans Colbert, and they edited him later. Yes. Like he was there the whole time. Right. And uh, I believe that's changed since my recording that he's back and he's there for and it's individual people now. Well, not anymore. He tweeted he had COVID. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, well, so well, he, he's going to be behind some glass. Yeah. Feel better, Steve. I know you listen. And, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, so this was my true first late night TV spot experience as far as the taping experience. Yeah. Because, uh, what, so I fly to LA I, I'm staying in an Airbnb. Caitlin flies in, and uh, we're hanging out, and uh, we're supposed to be picked up at 11 o'clock. Wow. Uh, Early. This was the earliest taping in the Late Late Show's history with James Corden. We filmed at 1230. That was the earliest time ever? It was your day? was my day. Why? Because he and the crew had to fly to another location Oh, later that day. Oh, I went late, on late, late, later that day. Yeah, <laughs> I went on the early, early, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the early, early, late, late. Um, but I went on stage at one fourteen in the afternoon. Oh my god! So we'll cut. Well, we're cutting ahead here, but so I get there. Brunch slot. Yeah, <laughs> is the audience eating eggs? <laughs> Are they drinking mimosas? <laughs> it's so. You're, all right, you're. Uh, I, I'm gonna go out of order here because that. So no, I'll pin in that. Okay. That joke because that's a perfect joke. Okay. Pin in that joke. Uh, so, uh, the car is supposed to pick me up at eleven. Caitlin and I get ready. I I have a phone session with Je uh with Jen, your therapist, our yes, therapist, our therapist, and she was super helpful. Uh, Before he was, she was super. <laughs> Uh, so, so, uh, I'm walking around on the phone in the LA heat, sweating, talking to Jen. Yeah. Uh, I grabbed Caitlin and I some coffees. Not the best walk in town there. Not the best walking town. Uh, no kooks though. Oh, that's interesting. You're in a kook free zone. I was in a kook free area. I think they corral them all in the one part of the town. Yeah. They were in the kook coop. <laughs> kook coop. <laughs> the kook district. <laughs> so, uh. We, um, the coo corral, <laughs> the coo corral, cucamonga, cucamonga. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, they're supposed to pick us up at 11, and uh, Caitlin's like, why don't you run through the set with me and you know, get warmed up? And oh my god, 
So I'm doing the set to her, and it I'd rather, feels. I rather do it in the mirror. Oh, I I was just she was gonna hear it whether she wanted to or not. Okay, so I, I'm running it, and then I'm, for some reason I'm like I gotta look at my phone, and uh, it, it, this is like 10:45. Chauffeur has called and texted me here. Oh, oh my God, you're early. You're too early, and uh, so, I know, I know. I'd rather be them late. Yeah, but. Uh, Give me a heads up. They're going to be there early. I know. And, and here's the thing. I was ready dressed wise and all everything, but I didn't have everything in my bag. So I, uh -oh. I freaked out and I'm putting stuff in my bag. Caitlin's like, I didn't do this yet. And I'm like, and even though they, the guy's going to wait for me, he's there to, to get me. Yeah. It'd I'm be like, weird, ah! if, it'd be weird if he had other rides, he had to drive away. Yeah. yeah. He's like, uh, I've, I got to go take somebody to uh, the airport after this. Um, uh, but, uh, <laughs> He's got to take somebody to a different show. Hurry up. I'm on duty. And uh, so <laughs> I'm free. I got, I got Kimmel. <laughs> I'm freaking out I, and I'm packing all the stuff and I run out there in just a white t-shirt. I have the shirts on a hanger. Oh, uh, yeah. Just like uh, what we did with Colbert. Right? Yes. So I'm like, ah, I'm here and we run out and we jump in the uh, the uh, it was a like an escalators. I, I, I don't know what it was. It was huge. That's the biggest. Thing. That's the biggest Uber. You can yeah. select that option. But it was a chauffeur. He had a suit on. He was this whole. It was this whole thing. Oh my god! And to open the trunk, you hit the insignia of the, the Cadillac. It was a Cadillac. Thank you. I couldn't think of what it was. And uh, I, I don't usually we got Escalade. I mean, yeah, uh, that's true. But uh, Escalade is my way of saying big <laughs> car. Yeah, yeah. Could have been a Hummer. I don't know. Oh, the situation escalated. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Were you in the Hollywood Hills? There's high escalation. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. That was great. Anyways, that was wonderful. Uh, we get to the... Uh, the CBS Studios. It's just this huge building. It says CBS on it. Oh my God! We're going through the a gate. Lot of, a lot of history there. Yes. Twilight Zone. Maybe. Yes. And <laughs> I think one of them. Price is Right. Price is Right. Uh, yeah. So the gate comes up. It is the Price is Right because I saw a bunch of pictures for it. But, oh, cool. Uh, the gate comes up, and it was so crazy. He goes to the booth, and he's like uh, Stephen Rogers, and the gate immediately opens. And oh. I'm like, oh my God! I'm, I'm the password. And uh, wow, man, that's like that's like every uh, behind the scenes thing I watch. Yes, it's crazy. Get there. There's a parking spot with my name. Oh, my God. It's a cone with a piece of paper on it, but oh, okay. it's printed. It'd be weird if they painted it. Yes. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy that immediately does it after I'm, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh, park in the spot. There's a guy there. His name's Kevin. He was wonderful. I. Uh, like he when he was laying in the parking spot, yeah, he was saving it. He, he had oh. Stephen written on his chest. Uh, no, he was waiting for me to take me into the studio and oh. to run. He was one of the, uh, I believe, producers, or I'm going to prefer get his his title, but he was worked for the show and he was tremendous and wonderful. And his name was Kevin. Kevin, yes. Oh wow. And uh, he had the uh, it, the clipboard, everything. He, he walked in with Adam, and then he turned around and go, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got on the plane. Kevin, <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> and then when uh, I I was uh, taking a long time, uh, I was like, "Shouldn't we hurry up?" And the driver was like, "Kevin can wait." Uh, That's good. Uh, so uh, Kevin takes us in. It's me and Caitlin. He goes, "Your the rest of your party is already here." And that was Jessica Moses and uh, Dominic uh, from uh, Blonde Medicine. Blonde Medicine, they're wonderful people, and uh, I they I invited them to be a part of the experience, and um, we uh, so we're taken into the the studio. There's a common area. So you remember this from Colbert, but there's like they didn't have this in Colbert really. There's a common area green room, and then there's separate dressing rooms off of that well we went to the common area green room when there was like 
food at the end. Right, and that was a separate floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really big. Yeah. So this one was in the middle of all the other dressing rooms. Oh. And they had a, you know, like those do not disturb signs. Mm-hmm. They had one of those on my door with my name on it. Well, so that's really cool. Stephen Rogers, like this room is reserved for Stephen Rogers and it said Late Late Show and I have it at my office now. But... So I get in there. I say, "Oh my hel- god!" Yeah, I say hello to Jessica and Dom. We hug and everything. God, Colbert. We just showed up and they pointed us. Yeah, they, you, know, you can go over there. Uh, I guess. Go over there. I guess. Yeah. I think this is open. They no, knock. They were great. They had a cool sign with my name, but it was oh, like yeah, a yeah. slideshow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and their swag bag was crazy at Colbert because I have the shirt and everything, there and, was... and the mug. But oh yeah, yeah. The swag bag was good at uh, Corden, but I didn't get a mug. I didn't get anything with the logo on it. But uh, what was in the than, bag? Uh, a whole bunch of tea, like oh. a bunch of tea bags, uh, and there. I think it's from a comedy. A lot of, go- a lot of gossip in there. <laughs> I spilled it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. I think the uh, whoever is involved in the tea is a com- comedy associated because one of the teas is called Serenity Now. Oh, okay, Seinfeld. And, and there's a couple other joke tea titles i'm blanking on but um anyways and then a a nice tumbler and um there's a couple other things i'm blanking on right oh like a nice tea mug that it has a steeper in it okay and no logo no logos but uh i tell tony deo this shout out to tony deo i see him later he's like how was it And and i was like it was great and he's like, did you get a mug? And he's like, you got to do late night for the mugs. And I, I go, I didn't get a mug. And he's like, oh, man. And then I see him, and he brings it up again. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm going to buy one. And he's like, don't buy one. <laughs> and I'm like, why? He's like, I already bought you one, and it's coming right oh, now. I'm like, oh, so my nice. God. Tony Day was the best. Oh, man. Um, Tony, good late nights. Yeah, he's got good ones. Killer late nights. Hurricane Sandy saved lives. <laughs> <laughs> Always makes me laugh. Watch his Conan. It's amazing. Is that uh, too? It, and is a late, late show. Um, anyways, so we get there, and then I meet the uh, booker, Ryan, who's just amazing and nice, and I think an anxious guy like uh, us, because uh, uh, somebody goes, how do you, so is this is a fun part for you, right? He's like, no, I'm nervous until the comedian's comfortable. Oh, well, that's his whole job. Yeah. He's got to see it through. Yeah, so he was tremendous. Uh, if you, I, I don't know if this will get back to him, but Ryan, you were the best because he just talked me through it. He's like, I can't stress enough. Just go slow. He's like, your set's going to do great, so just go slow and enjoy it. Whoa, that's good advice. It was really good advice. The Colbert guy didn't even look at you. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't <Yeah>. even there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Colbert didn't say anything. Uh, uh so, and these are jokes. Thanks for having me on Colbert. But um, yeah. anyways, uh, we're, so we're in the green room and you remember this uh, from, you were in my green room for- yeah, a lot of snacks. Uh, <laughs> Colbert. A lot of food. Yeah. Caitlin was my Andrew this time. She ate everything. I didn't oh, nice. touch anything. Well, it's pretty early. It's around lunchtime. Yeah. She, they ask, because of COVID, they- they ask what snacks you would want. They give you options. Okay. And I put them in. It was like- Chicken, uh, like boneless wings, basically. Uh, that's good. And uh, pre-cut apples, cookies, and oh, all this yeah. stuff. Oh, man. Taylor ate everything. Oh, that's a good spread. Yeah, it's great spread. Would have loved to have it. But I was so nervous, I didn't touch it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she knew that was going to happen. So she ate them all. She ate them all. And that's all right. Uh, there was, but tons of LaCroix. Oh, my God. It was amazing. What the hell? Uh, my so, God, I went to the wrong taping. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. You I ate t- all my I, stuff. I know, I know. <laughs> they didn't have bonus wigs. Uh, so, uh, I'm. you remember this from uh, Colbert. I'm like, with that nervous energy, I met, I was doing a lot of jokes. Like, you have that boomerang of me doing that silly dance. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm the same way, yeah. Yeah, so I'm being all goofy. So at one point, I'm like jumping around and, and crouching like a like a dinosaur, and I'm uh-huh. like trying to make Caitlin laugh. So I'm crouched like this. If you're not, uh, if you're listening instead of watching, I'm crouched down, and my hands are like claws. Uh huh. And I'm making everyone laugh, but then at the same time, everybody stops laughing, and their face immediately changes. I was like, "What happened? I'm not wearing my brown pants." Behind and- you, there's there's a guy with dinosauritis. <laughs> he just looks like that all the time. Oh my God, that's so insensitive. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have dinosauritis. 
<laughs> uh, you have three weeks until your uh, toes turn into talons. <laughs> So what uh, you got to do is take this medication, stay away from any meteors. Yeah, yeah, and uh, be a clever girl. <laughs> uh, we got a park for your kind. <laughs> Ship you over there. Uh, so uh, I, everyone stops laughing and their face changes, and I'm like, what is this? And then I hear, hello. Oh, my God. And Corden is in the room. I had I, my door figured, wide open. I figured he was. He... He walked right in. He's like, hey, how's it going? And he's like, what are you doing? And I'm crouched down like an let, idiot. Let me do his impression. What are you doing? <laughs> My God. Oi. <laughs> We're both doing a horrible job. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. He was the nicest guy ever. He was oh. incredible. That's he, why he got so far. I mean, I introduced him to everybody. He's like, hey, how are you? Hello, hello. And uh, he's introducing himself. And, you know, we all know who he is. And he uh, says hello. And he's talking to me. And we're riffing. Oh. And he goes, I want you to know uh, this is the earliest taping we've ever done. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, you got your work cut out for you. And I'm like, well, did they already have breakfast? Or are you giving it to them right now? Oh. I did your breakfast joke. Oh, good, good. And, and what do he say? He goes, they're actually here from the night before. We gave them a nice meal last night, and they slept in the <laughs> in the studio. Wow, that's pretty good riffing. Yeah, so we were just riffing a bunch. He goes, yeah, we have to leave for t for New York tonight. That's why the taping's so early. So I apologize. And then did you say we could car we could carpool? So, oh my god, not too far off. He goes, yeah, we're going to New York. We're we're shooting a music video uh, in someone's apartment tomorrow morning without them knowing and i go well i get in around nine o'clock so i'll leave the door unlocked and i'm doing pretty good. i'm doing a bit like he's coming to my place and he's i see him looking at me like oh this guy's like riffing it with everything i say oh and steve uh, i hear I, I see sparks yeah you record him and uh i'm like all right this was a good interaction and then uh he goes to each other guest's dressing room after me, and it's, like, super quick. And then he leaves. And I was like, I think I got the longest chat with him. And Caitlin goes, yeah, for show business, I think that was longer than normal. Ooh. And I was like, okay, that's pretty good. I wonder what he said to Ron on. He probably just <laughs> looked at him and closed the door. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, I guess he walked in on Ron on meditating. Oh, my God. So uh, I, it's everyone, I, I don't know the other experiences, but everyone's had, like, Oh, he's just in here now. Uh, no heads up. So, um, I uh, that this was the no most nerve wracking part, which your parents told you about, is they do a preset talk to you where the camera's on you in your dressing room and you're talking to him through the camera. Uh huh. And uh, I was just freaking out about this. And Fumiabi, who's a friend of ours. Oh yeah, forgot to ask you about. Writes for the show. So he came, we invite, we said, hey, please come by and say hello, we wanna see you. And he talked to me for a while. I'm like, hey, what's the hack thing that comedians do in this doorway thing? Yeah. And he goes, don't take one of the Emmys and pretend to be stealing it. Cause there's Emmys on a shelf in, excuse me, in the common green room. And then he's like, and don't call him Jimmy Kimmel. As a joke. Oh. And I was like... That's a bad joke. I was like, who's doing these? And he's like, major celebrities did both of those jokes. Uh, and I was like, and oh. Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ronan just joked about being nervous. And I, and I, Ronan told me, he's like, just riff. And he's like, don't plan anything. Just be yourself. Oh, my God. And that was killer advice. Because the door... Op so he goes to, gets to my door. I'm opening it as the person's already knocking. And I was that nervous. I open the door and uh, you can hear the audience and him and everyone's clapping and I go, Hey everybody. And, and Corden goes, now I know Steven's ready because I walked by his dressing room and what were you doing, Steven? Tell everybody what you were doing. And I was like, Oh, I was trying to make my girlfriend laugh. So I did this move and he goes, yeah, I walked by and Steven was like this. And he goes, ah, <laughs> wow. He's one up in you. He's doing it. And he goes, so I got to ask you, are you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm so happy to be here. And, uh, both guests prior to this are famous. They're famous dancers, okay. professional dancers. So when he asked if they're ready, they danced. Oh God. 
Uh, and he goes, are you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready to be here. He's like, no, are you ready? And I'm like, oh, am I supposed to do this? And I did like a dorky dance. Uh-huh. And he goes, no, uh, you're not supposed to do that. And he goes, I want to know if you're ready. And I finally clicks. And I go, oh, yeah. And then I go, ah. And the place goes nuts. Oh, my God. You can hear them. Steve. And I'm like, oh. And then the, the door closes. This is on my Instagram. You can see how I fell apart as soon as I closed the door. Because the str- like the stress of pulling that off was more than the set. I bet, yeah. And uh, at least the set you can write and work on. For, yeah. for a year. Yeah, exactly. You can't work on that dinosaur thing. And the clubs. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, uh, then we sit around and watch the show, and uh, uh, in real time watch all all the segments, all of the stuff, and. Uh, I'm around people the entire time. You know, there's the makeup people, there's the hair people, there's Caitlin, there's Jessica, there's Dom, there's the booker, the the other guests, the staff. Everybody's amazing there. Yeah. And uh, then they go, all right, we're ready for you. And they take me down the stairs. And at one point, the booker goes, all right, we'll see you later. And he takes Caitlin, Jessica, and Dom away. Okay. And now he cordon them off. <laughs> And and <laughs> that was great. I loved it. <laughs> and I'm just with one woman who was uh, guiding me to backstage. They hand me my mic. They take my. They made me wear the visor mask uh, that's clear. You know the headband. Oh one. yeah, yeah. The one that looks like a welder. Yes. I take that, and then the woman goes, "All right, just stand right here." And then she leaves, and I'm just in this black room, completely blacked out room, and a curtain a black curtain, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm in the spot. Oh, my God. You had to walk through that? I I walked. Or the curtain is open. The curtain's closed, but I'm realizing I'm behind that curtain that they open. Oh, my God. And And it's the first time I'm alone all day. And is the show have been going on or is it about to start? The show's been going on. The whole show's been happening. Oh, wow. And it's my turn. In order that it aired, everything has happened, and they're in commercial. And Corden, I think, so I can't see anybody, but I can hear everything. I hear Corden, I think he gets up from his desk and goes, all right, everybody, late night is, is I uh, sorry, stand-up is hard enough as it is. Oh, my God. He goes, let alone at, and I could tell by the t- pause, he must have done this. He uh-huh. goes, one fourteen in the afternoon. Ooh. And he gets a big laugh. Right. And on a weekday. And he goes, on a Monday. Oh, man. And Monday kills. And I was like, they're great. They're going to be fun. Man, and this Corden is... He's a, I'm in love with this guy now. I'm in love with him. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting to see if he uh, wants to date. And uh, that's yeah. dumb. And, uh, well, I did carpool karaoke, but I just sat in his back seat. So I, <laughs> I asked him, I go... What's the biggest, what's the lamest joke you get every time? Uh, he goes, uh, when are we going to sing in the car together? Oh, God. I'm like, you still, you get those? People think that you haven't heard that? He's like, I get it all the time. And I'm like, and I go, well, all right, now that, there goes that. And and he laughs. I pretended that it was uh-huh. on my plans. Um, I would have been like, your trunk is very uncomfortable. I've been trying to get on that show. That's That's funny. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was on carpool karaoke at a squeegee, and I, when they had a red light, <laughs> uh, I, I, I handed them their food through the drive-through window. I cut them off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, him, I honked. If you listen at minute twelve of Lady Gaga, it's like you hear a honk. It's me. Oh man! But so I'm. I hear him say all that, and uh, Reggie, the band leader who, from County Bang Bang. Uh, oh yeah, the comic Reggie Watts. Reggie Watts. He. I didn't know he was the band leader. He's the band leader. He. He's got it's. It's like Questlove. Yeah, the whole it's time. Show. The whole time he's going comedy, comedy. Uh, while uh, uh, Corden's saying all this, so it's like a little silly of an introduction, which is perfect. And Corden's like, let's make him feel welcome. Let's 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 give him a good show. Whoa, Reggie Watts. I know that was. Did as, you meet him? I did not meet him. It was very intimidating knowing he was watching me. Yeah, as, as well as Corden. But I met Corden. He's like the first alt comedian that uses music. Yes, and, you know. I've seen him live, and he's great. So, oh I was, my god! Uh, so the curtain opens, and then everyone's seen the set. So I'm not gonna describe the set, but uh, 
Um, I ad libbed two parts. What in the set? Oh my god! Two things were not planned, uh, but I did them because I felt them in the moment, and I can't believe I did it. But what it, happened. What do you mean? What, what what were they? Oh, okay. I thought something happened with the tech. Um, no. Uh, so, I'm. I do. I come out. I do my first joke immediately. Nice big laugh, and I'm like, "All right, this is gonna be great." Oh my! I God. get a laugh in the first ten seconds, which I was very hopeful for. Did I put you at ease? Put me at ease. That's good. Second joke does well. I get to the third joke. I say the setup, and they laugh at the setup. I say, my girlfriend's more masculine than I am. Oh. And it gets a laugh, and I smile, and I go, there's more to this. And that gets a laugh, and uh, I'm like, all right, we're in a good spot here. Do that joke. And I added an act out maybe two days before. Dinosaur. (laughs) No. It's like your your main joke now. <laughs> you that got me. I did not see that coming. That was great. So I do the the act out where I sway, and that was with, with the too, prey predator no, joke. No, the oh. my girlfriend's more masculine than me. But uh, people are like, "Does that make you feel weak?" I'm like, "Actually, it makes me feel pretty." And I swayed. Oh, nice. And when I did that, it got an applause break. And I was like, "Oh, I added that act out like two days ago." Oh my god! And then uh, spontaneous. Spontaneous uh, cordustion. Cordustion. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Escalating. Um, Escalating. So uh, <laughs> uh, then I do uh, the next two jokes. And I when I do the prey joke, I say, I'm uh, there's so there's a lot of women in the audience. All the guests were women. And uh, so most and most of the crowd was women. And when I say I like strong women, I hear a couple of people go, women go, yeah. And and uh, it doesn't really pick up on the tape. And then one, I go, strong women, you go after what you want. And a woman in the front row, they're right on top of you, by the way. Oh, my God. They're really close. They're oh, like no. from me to the camera away. Okay. They're very close. A woman goes, yeah, we do. And uh, when I go, strong women go after what they want. And they're having fun. So it's like positive stuff. And I'm like, I think this joke's going to do really well. And I go, so I just try to go to a bar and look and look like prey. And that gets an applause break. Oh, my God, man. And there's more Joe. You're in the groove. So then I go. You're in the Steve zone. Yeah, I go I, I go to a bar and graze on nachos. And as soon as I do that act out, Corden starts dying, like, super loud. Nachos come out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and it kills. And then I go up and i go i'm gonna say this i go thank god you guys laughed because this is a very vulnerable position to be in and, oh wow and that's not in the set oh my god but i i did it and it worked Corden, did you look at him when he was laughing i couldn't they're they're not right next to me oh my god they're right they're like the boxes are to me right now i know they're there but i'd have to turn a little bit to look oh wow so uh and then uh I do the rest of the set. I get Reggie a couple times. I'm like, yes. Oh, my God. And uh, does he make like a kazoo sound when you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. And uh, <laughs> then I do my second to last joke. My second to last joke, Brian helped me with. Oh, and my Brian's God. note got me an applause break. Okay. Let's hear it. Uh, <clears throat> the joke is uh, I had to meet my girlfriend's parents. And uh, my buddy was like, just focus on how her mom looks. Uh, and when I said that on the show, it got a laugh, and that's never gotten a laugh before. They were gassed up, man. And I go, uh, uh, just focus on her mom looks, because however your your girlfriend's mom looks, that's how she... Oh, no, however her mom looks, that's how your girlfriend's going to look one day. And bad news, everybody, her mom looked disappointed. Uh-huh. And, when I, and uh-huh. saying her mom one more time was Brian's note. He's like, say her mom one more time. Okay. Instead of saying she looked disappointed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when There's I did more, that. More anticipation, build up. Yes. And it got an applause break. And that joke was struggling. I, like, it does really well. But once I started running it in a late night, it was struggling. Oh, wow. And uh, those little tweaks. Little everybody. tweaks, everybody. That's why stand up is an art form. Yeah. Little tweaks was my. Uh, my <laughs> It's a high school band. And I don't even see that coming. I expect, uh, and her mom was dead, <laughs> you know, in a hospital bed. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> her mom. Uh, her mom was her dad. Uh, her, her mom is in an urn. <laughs> it's 
so earn your keep. <laughs> earn your keep. Uh, earn baby earn. <laughs> Mr. Earns. Uh, <laughs> Sweet Earn. Sweet Earn. Sweet. Bert and Earn. Um, Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. It's a really dark twist of Sesame Street. Oh, man. So that gets an applause break. Then I do the closer. It gets an applause break before I do the act out. And then when I do the act out, it does really well. And I, I say thank you, everybody. Corden comes over and says, check out Before He Was Super. Whoa. So get a lot of plugs touches, on the album. He touches you? He touches me. We do the the bro hug handshake, which I was fretting about because I didn't want to screw that up on national TV. And you knew he was going to do the bro hug? I didn't. Okay. And I even asked the booker. I was like, this is a weird question, but I have social anxiety. What handshake does he do? And he goes, I have no idea. Oh, my God. He improvs it. And I saw what he came in with, and it was like just reflex. Thank God it worked, because it would have been a clip that I know we would have shared fifteen thousand times of me messing it up. So he handshakes, comes, brings you in, and, and we puts do, his arm around. Yeah, him. we do that, and he goes, I bet, was, he's, I bet he's a good hugger. He's a great hugger. Mm-hmm. I, I I felt safe, and uh, I I was like, thank you so much. He's like, you were so great. And then we cut to commercial. He's still talking to me, and he tells me a joke that my set reminded him of. And uh, he's like, it's not like your joke, but it's really funny. It ends with brown pants. (laughs) Did that even make it in the cut? We talked about that joke, right? Or did it? Oh, never mind. Oh, let's tell the joke again, just in case. (laughs) No, I don't know if it made it. But yeah, we'll cut. We'll do it again. I think it did. I think it really did. uh, Oh, I don't know if it did. No, it did. It did because we set up Cincinnati. Okay, I'm gonna trust you. All right. Well, if it, if if, if, it if, you're, well, if you're watching and there's no brown pants joke, listen to the audio. I'll put that in the audio. Yeah, because the perfect the camera died, but the um, audio was there. But uh, he tells me that. Do you want to hear the joke that he told me? Yes. Uh, absolutely. So he, I'm in love with this guy. Yeah, he's the best. So oh my um, God, he goes. Uh, I'm, fr- I'm blanking on the comedian's name, but it's it was an English or it was a UK comic, I believe. And he goes, uh, uh, so. The comic goes. I was in the dress. I was in a dressing room trying on clothes. He went to university in Kentucky, <laughs> and the and the woman, uh, the woman uh, giving me the clothes goes. How does ever? Do you like everything? Do you? Uh, or how do you look? Do you do you like uh, these clothes? And he goes, I don't know yet. And then he looks at his phone, and he goes, No, I don't like them. And it was him getting a text from his oh his girlfriend sending the pictures to the girlfriend being like, you know, you don't like those. I would have laughed so hard. <laughs> I, and I did. I laughed really hard. I was like, that's a great joke. And he goes, you were so great. Bless you for being here. Thank Bless you so much. You. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I was sneezing. And, uh, uh, <laughs> <I had> allergies. <laughs> and, uh, and then that was it. That was the last time I saw him. And oh gosh, crazy. And then they take me, here's a classic you and me move out of anxiety you i think you would have done the same thing so they where are they taking me they they go to commercial and they go one more time for steven rogers and the place goes nuts which is meant so much and then a bunch of staff members are coming up to me going that was so great you were so funny oh my god people are shaking my hand i'm shaking a bunch of hands and then this one guy goes like this and i shake his hand he's like no i'm just trying to grab your microphone Uh i was uh like oh that's funny though and uh, then they take me up, and I get up to the common area green room, and the staff that's there clap. Dude, this is nothing like Colbert because there's I mean, so many comedians. There was so many comedians; it was everyone was so busy. Yeah, but I'm the only comedian there. Yeah, so they're like, "This guy's great. This guy came in and killed it. He didn't dance. He <laughs> told jokes." And uh, and then I just uh, oh, and then I Caitlin and I hugged and I cried into her arms. I would too. Yeah. <laughs> You just picture him, picture her being James. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, I kissed her said, and said, "Thanks, James." <laughs> I mean, Caitlin. Uh, <laughs> she was like, "I love you," and I'm like, "What happened to your accent?" <laughs> uh, but there was a fun. You look at her. You go, uh, 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 "The phone thing." Remember? She's like, "No." <laughs> Remember that act out you laughed real hard at? <laughs> Well, I was watching from the the seats, but uh, can't 
swear by Kate. I, everyone knows I love Caitlin, but Caitlin was amazing because there was no other comedians there. Jessica and Don were awesome too, but as a comic, you know, it's a different connection you have. Well, you fool me. Fumi was there. That's true. Fumi was very helpful. Did I guess, he talk to you afterwards? Yes. K- Fumi came in. We hugged. He was like, that was so great. And uh, he's like, well, one of the better sets I've seen here. And it was very nice. Uh, but, and Caitlin, when Caitlin hugged me, this will be, I know the panickers will like this. When Caitlin hugged me, it was just going to be a normal hug. And then I felt the cry coming and she went to let go. And then I was still holding and she was like, oh, okay. I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I just cried into her shoulder blade. Um, she took out her iPad and watched something. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear pew, pew, pew. <laughs> She's playing she's a game. She's playing she Asteroids. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Fumi, do you know? Did he? Did you? Did you? Did he ask you about me? Do you know me and him go way back? Did I ever tell you about me and him? No. I I used to host an open mic, and I I would do a bar show after the open mic. And I would need people to stand out front and say comedy show. And that would be my corral. Like my bullpen would be the open mic people. And I remember I saw him. He had been doing comedy for like just a couple months. And I'm like, you're pretty good. Would you, uh, how do you feel about standing outside yelling free comedy show? And he goes, oh my God, you serious? I'm like, yeah. Wow. I'm like, yeah, man, you're ready for the big leagues. Yeah, yeah. You're, you've made it. <laughs> you've made it. I yeah. was the corded. You were corded. <laughs> you were you were corded. <laughs> so, so he goes, and then he's like, he's like, uh, we're we're I'm outside with him saying free comedy show, and he goes, man, it must be so cool, you know, being a real comic like you. And I'm going, what? I've been doing comedy like six months longer. <laughs> I'm like, but I I had to play it off. Yeah, yeah, so, man. Yeah, it's hard, you know, being on the road all the time. <laughs> yeah, like, being on the sidewalk. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm a sidewalk comic. <laughs> but Fumi, to his credit, like, yeah, I would ask these open mic people, and then they, and then I would be like, "You were great, man. Come back." And a lot of these people would would just like be late, or he was on time. He was like there before me. Well, he's be- trying to be a comedian. Yeah. he was. Now he is. Now he is. He's, he's a like- writer for the Late Late Show. He's been on. Colbert, he's yeah. got a killer podcast. He would have like tips and stuff about how to set up the room. I'm like, this guy's going to make it. And yeah. he did. Uh, and you got to see him. I got to see him. We hung out afterwards. It was so crazy because everything was done at four o'clock. So we were just having dinner. Oh, yeah. We had like a meal at four o'clock. We're having celebratory drinks and everything. Outside of the studio, right? You guys left? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, I saw that picture. Yes. And I took a bunch of swag. Uh, I took all the snacks. Like I felt like you. Yes, I, I took would too, all the yeah. snacks and I hid it in the bag. Even though it's all my stuff, they're like, "Yes." They go, "By the way, you can, you can take some of the snacks." And I was like, "Oh, I can," and it's all already hidden in my <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and all uh, these doggy bags. <laughs> your pockets are full of nuggets. Yeah, Jessica and Dom picked a great Italian restaurant. We go there. We're eating at the Italian restaurant. We're having a good time. Irene too shows up. Had uh, and then. Uh, Later, we go to another place, and Fumi meets us there, and we have uh, more drinks. Irene 3 <laughs> comes, and Irene 4. I, Irene 1 is the original, and uh, <laughs> she was... <laughs> Irene 2, Irene 2.0. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're just hanging out. It was a really fun uh, night, and um, we uh, there's, some, there's something I'm forgetting to tell you. Uh, Did Blonde Medicine pick up the check? Yes. Oh, nice. That's class. I mean, they're already the classiest, greatest people, but they bought pretty much everything before I even could think of You know, because you're on cloud nine. You don't even think about, I wanted to buy a round of stuff for everybody or dinner. I wanted to buy everything for people for being there and helping me, and th- and they didn't let me. Yeah. Well, they paid for Irene's and, and Fumi's food, too? Yeah. Whoa. And Caitlin's. Oh, my God. It was an amazing experience. Uh, I don't think they'll do that again. They're going to go, fool me once. <laughs> Shame on me. You are on fire today. Oh, well, I already had that. You got your fire pants. <laughs> the two one I came up with on the spot, the fool me once I had uh, from my old days. Oh, okay. Well, well shame on me. He, and he really hated that joke. N- nothing? Shame on oh, me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. Uh, 
every day I go up to Fumi, Fumi wants, and he go, I hate this so much. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what's the? Uh, <laughs> He's fuming. <laughs> He goes, uh, first two letters of my name to you. Oh, nice. F you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Oh, well, that leads into one of the topics we were submitted. Oh, very good. And uh, Smooth. Then, yes, uh, operator. Um, uh, my dad submitted a topic, uh, Rick. Oh, wow. And it was the anxiety of when your son does TV and you don't know how it went until you watch it on air. Yeah. Oh, I had that too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that is good but you texted me. It went great. Yeah. Be- because you were the, one of the only people I answered because, you know, a bunch of people texted me and I'm like, I want it. I truly made an effort to not be on my phone at, that day. Uh I, Caitlin had my phone most of the day, but when I did take it, I saw your. T- I looked and I saw yours, and yours is just the only one I opened and the only one I went. It went good. Yes, because of uh, our friendship, but also another thing that happened recently, and I didn't answer you. You knew how it went by how me. I oh, didn't that's answer. right. That's right. Yeah. So I wanted you to know every, that everything was good. Yeah, yeah. When I, if I don't, if I say good luck, I don't get anything back. I'm like, it went bad and. <laughs> I don't want to follow up. <laughs> I don't want to rub it in. Yeah. Uh, uh, so my my dad and my mom, my dad goes, you know, we were like doing other things throughout the day, but the entire time we would look at each other. My my mom and dad would look at each other and go, have you heard from him yet? Oh, my God. And uh, yeah, so uh, they were a wreck the, the whole day. And uh, thankfully, uh, it went well. That's cool. Yeah. I remember your mom and dad were at the Colbert. They were so. at the Colbert. They couldn't be at the Corden. Uh, flights are uh, literally an arm and a leg, I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, it, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that, uh, that's everything I can remember at this moment. Oh, cool. Well, we um, – yeah, man, I'm happy for you. Really cool. You're uh, – how long ago was Colbert? Was it three years ago? It'll be three years ago next month. Wow. So – cool that your experience work because i know a lot of people's second late nights are bad it's because i don't know why maybe they burn their five minutes and then maybe they're too cocky or something but i know a lot of like friends of ours second late night no good right i i mean and in history if you look at like people's second tonight shows it's a seinfeld quote he's like a lot of people had a great first and then their second one they weren't prepared to be asked back or right right so I um I'm very lucky and very honored that I got to do it and that it went well. I'm actually more proud of it than I I was worried I wasn't going to be I wasn't when I left uh, Colbert I wasn't I was proud but I was more anxious than anything. Was it good? Did people like it? You know, am I worthy? And this one I'm like it was good. I had fun. Yeah, cool, man. So I, I feel like, and that's all thanks to this podcast and Jen, a lot of mental exercises. And uh, you killed the riffing, which is like super hard when you're stressed out already. Yeah, and somebody we know, uh, Mr. Brian Regan texted me and he goes, that was a great set, great job, congratulations. I was like, thank you so much. He goes, question, did you ad lib? And I go, yeah, and he's like, it was crazy. Whoa. He's like, good job. Wow. And I was like, yeah. yeah. He he put it in quotes. He's like, did you ad lib this line? Or do you say that all the time? And I said, I, I don't say that. Wow, that's cool. He knows he knows you well enough to know. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It meant a lot. So, yeah. Really cool. Well, did you notice a, a big boost in socials and the album? And- yes. The, uh, late, the uh, special has... Um, almost as we speak doubled in views wow cool uh and the comments are on my special have been like a few of people have been like saw your cord and came over because of this yes and uh yes yes uh, it's the way to do it everybody and uh some followers and some dms it's been great already had two people ask how to get on the show uh uh-huh. You know how people uh, really want to make sure that you get to live in the moment and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. enjoy yourself. Well, did I tell? Did you tell me that story where uh, somebody invited somebody to their taping and that's all they kept asking? 
I did you tell me I've heard story? of a story like that, so I must have. It's not one I've experienced physically, but it's one I've heard. Yeah, the whole time. people just go to support you, and then they're like, "So, uh, <laughs> can I get an email?" Yeah. The worst. I hate getting that. That's great. How do I do it? Because it makes it seem like, you know, it was easy to do. And yeah, it's not a corn maze. Yeah. It's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's something you have to work really hard on. Even at the lowest level, when you get off stage, an audience member was like, "How do I can do this?" And I'm like, "Well, you gotta." I can't explain it to you in one word. Get away from me! I can explain it to you in two words. Go away. Yeah, yeah, I can tell you. Anywhere away from me, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, man, I heard a story last night where. Uh, the, literally the worst audience thing I think I've ever heard somebody say. It, it, some guy was was talking about an open mic where um, this woman came in and and was super loud and she goes, she, her friends are outside of the door and she says, "You guys got to come in," which sounds good. And then she says, "These guys are so bad." Oh. <laughs> and then they all came in. <laughs> I was like, man, that's crazy. And wow. then, and then, of course, this woman heckles the whole time, and then asks to go up at the end. Of course, of course. So, uh, I don't know. It's so funny, crazy. Well, we got topics, man. We I got know, topics. We got running Your battery. Uh, all right, I've got uh, the uh, the Twitter ones ready. Well, we got to do the email. We got a Patreon. Oh, let's do the email first. We got a yes. Patreon special. Uh, so this uh, comes from Avelina Mendoza. Hi, guys. have so many uh, to talk about this week, but I'll just talk about what happened today. So I live in a small apartment by myself with my two cats, both female. One is 18 and the other is four. Oh, wow. I'm that crazy cat lady that walks them 18? on leashes. Yeah, 18. I think they, they, la they live past 20, oh, most gee. cats. My goodness. Uh <laughs> Can drive. Yeah, Benny and Bowie will be uh, around for a while, hopefully. Um, uh, I'm that cat lady that walks them on leashes and takes them on road trips. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm with you. Uh, my girls are so good that way. The youngest likes to hang out in her cat backpack while the oldest walks around uh, on her leash when we are in big areas like parks. My oldest has health problems now, and I try to take her for walks for exercise, but my neighborhood has become dangerous with the local schizophrenic who yells at me for no reason and scares my girls. Oh, no. Kook. Oh, man. Uh, we've been going to the park when, uh, whenever I get off early from work and just walk around for about 20 minutes. Today, a woman approached me and wanted to hold my oldest cat. No. She then decided to smash her face right into the backpack to look at my other cat. Oh, my God. First of all, gross. <laughs> uh, I'm still scared of germs. She also didn't seem very stable. She then wanted to wanted me to take the cat out of the backpack. I said no. She started to question me about the cat and how long I've had her. At this point, I began feeling very uneasy. Yes. Oh, my God. Uh, it's crazy. And... Uh, and tried to politely excuse myself. Then she began to cry and said someone stole her cat. While well, I walked away and crossed the street ten minutes later, a gentleman on a bicycle pulled up to me and asked how old my cat is. She thinks I stole her cat. I let him know I've had her since she was born and have all my paperwork and witnesses to prove it. He told me he was, he was just needed to ask to keep her calm. I said that I was really sorry that happened to her, but that it really has nothing to do with me. She then pulled up and said the same thing. Get the hell out of here. At this point, I'm getting freaked out and feel cornered. I told him to please leave me alone. I have a right, just like anyone, to be at the park. These are my girls and have all my paperwork to prove it. I picked up my oldest and walked to my car really quickly. After I drove away, I began to cry and had the worst panic attack. Yeah, I, it's stressful. I couldn't breathe. Uh, wow. I couldn't breathe. And uh, and had to pull over. For a moment, I was really terrified these people were going to try to take my girl away from yes, me. Yes, I thought that too. Wow. Uh, All right, well, okay, I got one point, and it's the most powerful uh, thing ever. I think Jen, our therapist, told me this, or I read it myself, but you don't know, you don't know, you don't owe anybody your time. Yes. Unless you're getting paid by the hour by somebody, 
a stranger on the street asks you directions, you don't need to respond. Yes. That person is literally stealing from you. Yeah. A person asks you to hold a cat. No, I don't owe you this. Yeah. G- get away, woman. I, I'm in a hurry. I think you don't even need an excuse. Yeah. I now I just say ever, ever since I heard that, when people ask me for a favor, I go, no, no, sorry, no. Yes. And that shuts them down right away because once you get entrenched in their their psychosis, this kook hypnosis, they feel like. <laughs> They feel like you, you, the kooknosis. They they get their claws in and they get them deeper in, and it's yeah. harder to get them out. And they feel like they they use it against you. Well, I just spent this time with you, so you deserve to give me something. No, that first part of the time was giving you things. Yes, <laughs> I don't owe you. I, I I have to owe you more now that I paid you something. I which agree. Was my time in the beginning. I totally agree. Uh, I, Jen has also said this to me and it's like, once you look at your time, I mean, they say time is, is, is precious and all that. There's those, yes. ex, those cliches. But once you look at time as something that is valuable and yours and that people could waste it. Absolutely. I mean, these are all things that are said all the time, but I think if you really look at it, it's yes, this is important. Your all your time is important. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, your cats are important. Yes. And some woman with the face smashing is not important at no. all and you don't know this person but it is scary this situation this story is scary i would be uncomfortable i'd be worried on behalf of my cats you don't want them to be hurt you don't want to be hurt you, and and uh it, it does feel threatening even and to be accused of something you have not done yeah like is, the greatest crime theft so uh yeah, it's really annoying evelyn i'm i'm so sorry that you went through this and a panic attack seems justified yeah, uh and you I, got kook double teamed yeah you got crazy woman and then bike yeah psycho. And her, her bike sidekick and uh yeah freak on wheels sidekick stand and uh <laughs> so i'm sorry this happened but it, it, the panic attack i'm sure uh afterwards really got probably got all of it out of your system i hope because yeah. that's a lot of stress all at once and, uh, and now you know you got like some street smarts now like me like when i first moved to new york uh, i you know i was that guy in the beginning of a zombie movie Hey, what's this? So you got blood from your mouth? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, oh you're groaning and your eyes are white? Yeah, let me investigate here and talk to you, and then you get attacked. Yeah. But now I'm like I'm like Will Smith in the I Am Legend movie. You yeah. Know? I'm like walking down the street. Hey, man, get away. <laughs> hey, what? Yeah. Can I ask you something? Nope. Sorry, I'm in yeah. a hurry. Well, I, I am. I don't even say sorry anymore. I used to say sorry. Yeah. Now I go, nope, 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 nope. Get the hell away. I'm glad that you drive to the park because you had your your out. You had a way out of there. Yes. You didn't ha- you're not walking home. Maybe where they, they thought maybe you. they thought you didn't drive and they would have it followed might, you. I mean maybe, but I don't want I hope this doesn't scare you from going to the park. Maybe you could go to the park with a friend. Maybe you can go I uh I know your boyfriend if I remember correctly, your boyfriend lives in a different part of California. But Oh yeah, yeah. Uh you know, maybe going with a friend or or planning a time where the park is is is, is it's busiest i know you're, you're nervous about germs but there is safety in numbers and it might be worth it to go 15 minutes out of your way to a better park that's or, true you know once you get one kook it's like roaches yeah you, you, there's more in the trees and then the <laughs> underground and stuff they're like hydra you you, you remove one two take its place <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, but the the one one kooks, I feel like they congregate together. They're like, oh, one of us. All right, yeah. let me get, you know, that's why there's a guy with a bike. and Yeah. You know, and I told you, I think I told this story before, but there was this similar psycho that lived in my building when I lived in Deeper in Queens, and he had one, he had like a kook apprentice. Yeah. That he was training to take his place when he overdosed one day. <laughs> yeah, instead of catching a fly in, in his hand, uh, it's, <laughs> it's... It's taking up... Taking a dump on the street. <laughs> Take a, uh, take a can out of the trash. And I know we know it's a real pro- problem. We're not diminishing the problem, but th- we're talking about uh, the situations we get ourselves in. Yeah, and I don't. I I mean, I feel bad for the homeless. I feel bad for the mentally ill, and that's something I have empathy for. But when people ap- start getting in your personal space and and yelling at you, I mean, that's not right at all and i know right. i'm not being an ableist here we've been attacked but when a serial killer kills somebody they get arrested when a crazy person yells in your face i mean 
that's wrong. So yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I had a guy the other day. I texted you and Joe about it, but a guy in the train. Oh, yeah. I haven't told you this yet. I said, and I re- when I answer, I have no cash on me. I'm telling the truth. Uh, I don't carry it. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I don't have any cash. And I said, I'm sorry, which. Yeah, Gizm, but, Gizm shows him uh, vulnerability. Because no one was looking at him. And I I looked at him and I was like, I'm sorry. I don't have anything, which is the truth. And then he lost it and he started grabbing his junk oh. and shaking it at me. And he said, do you think you got a big, uh, you got a big one? You think you got a big one? And he's screaming at me. And then he walks away. Hey, he didn't know who he's messing with. And Sam Evans looks at me and goes, he must listen to Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Um, well, uh, so Evelina, we're so sorry. We're glad you're okay, and uh, I hope that this doesn't deter you from uh, still spoiling your cats because uh, I-, I know how much joy that brings them and how much joy brings you. Yeah, and don't be afraid just to, to say no without sorry. Because when I used to the, the story of Fumi, when we used to stand outside and go free comedy show, people would just walk by us. But it's a numbers game, we, so we go to the next person. Like if somebody just walked by us without saying anything. It didn't get to us because we we were used to it. Yeah, and we we didn't even want to waste time with a convo. We wanted just to keep it moving because if somebody liked the idea of a free comedy show, we wanted to talk to them, not somebody who wasn't interested. And that's what the homeless people or, or the kooks or whoever are doing too. So yeah, they'll go money, 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 money. And if you turn around and go, I'm sorry, man, they're like, well, this is a new reaction. Uh, let me, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's run with this. Let's run with this. Let's improv a dinosaur move. <laughs> Uh, do we have time for more? Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, we got 10 minutes. All right. Uh, so this is on our Twitter here. Oh. Uh, Mark Cam, I told my wife I, I'd i apply a caulk to the door frames, bathroom, kitchen, etc. in our house. I've never done it before, and it looks easy, but I just can't do it. The tube and caulking gun have been on the dining room table for over a week. I can't get myself to do it. Oh my god, man! Speaking, of <laughs> I mind, love this, Mark. So relatable. I've I've had a vacuum in my hallway for a week, uh, and I haven't <laughs> vacuumed anything. But that was like my initial step was to get it out of the closet and put it around. Uh, you know, it's like a baby step it. But then, then every time I go to the bathroom, I step around a big vacuum. Oh man, I uh, and I put it away. Oh, like, I was gonna I, say, I, I'm trying I, to find it. I did use it. Um. This morning. The caulk is, uh, you know, that, I mean, I've never used it. My, my, I'm sure my dad knows how to do it. I, I've i never used caulk before, but uh, it is intimidating to do a handy thing for your spouse yep. the, for the first time. Oh, because yeah. the nature of, of, de- of being in a relationship with someone, and a healthy one, I think, is being able to tease each other. But you never want to give them the ammunition if you can help it. Yeah. So of course I would have that gun on the, on the table, uh, with my badge and, uh, <laughs> and not use it be out of fear of messing up and, uh, being uh, teased. That's what I do when I play poker. I, I pour a cowboy hat, put a cock gun on the table. <laughs> uh, yeah. And if someone's cheating, I, I, I throw a spreading knife under the table, but let me, let me tell you the yeah, spreading knife. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, <laughs> when you finish this task and it does well, it's the best feeling ever. It you, is. You're it like, feels why amazing. Did I wait for, why, why did I wait a week? Why did I Oh, my God. My oh, brain. Oh, man. Brown I need, pants. I need more coffee. <laughs> why did I wait a week to do this? It was great. <laughs> oh, man. Well, good luck, Mark. And uh, I, I got to tell you, funniest topic I've seen in a little bit. I, I relate very much. And we got to get to Bell, who also tweeted. Um, she said, uh, she's she wants, she says, can I handle a third job without a car? Will I ever stop forgetting doctor's appointments? Um, oh, those are two topics. Yes. Can you get a third job without a car? She doesn't have a car and she's working two jobs already? My God. Man. Well, if this third job, get a remote job, I assume. I yeah. So you don't have to travel. Or get a job with a company car. Yeah, there's some out there. Uh, I've never had one of those. I, I think we need, well, it says 49, 49ers fan, so I'm assuming you're in San Francisco. I believe you saw me in San Francisco, Bell. Oh, oh um, cool. 
you have the, so you must be using the public transportation and it's working for you. But yeah, three is hard. Three is three hard. Is very hard with no with no car. I mean, it. You have a car, and Caitlin has a car in New York, and it's like if you have a certain amount. I think you're the same way. It depends on how many things you have that night, it, whether you use the car or not. Yeah, yeah. It depends on where I'm going, what I'm doing. Yeah. Because there's the public transport, but it has kooks, and it's <laughs> always delayed. And So if you have... It's stressful. If you're in the car, though, it's it's you can listen to music, and unless you're in traffic and are late. But. I, I would hope that all three don't uh, are land on the same day, first of all. But, uh, yeah. Because then you would definitely need it, I would assume. But... I don't know. I've, I've something I've never experienced. I, I, I would say you need a car for two. <laughs> so I, I don't know. Best of luck. Uh, and then we'll get in. We, you have a lot of topics, Bell. We're gonna get into others so we can get to them, and then we'll, yeah, yeah, Let's go over yours em. over the course of the next couple eps. Let's hear them. Uh, we have one from uh, Sweet Potato. Uh, reconnecting with my son. Oh, wow, Sweet Potato. Well, uh, you know, maybe bring some uh, of your fries or... Uh, Sweet potato, yeah. Deep fry yourself. Uh, that, it makes it better. Yeah. Get, get a nice mayo dip. Well, I would say uh, I, I'm. we're missing... We don't have a ton of info, so I'll just say hopefully that it's uh, something you both want to do. And, uh, and watch Home Alone, because uh, that's what that guy did. Remember? What? The the, um, the guy who had the oh, salt. Oh, yeah, yeah. He reconnected I, with his son at yes. the end. I thought you met with Kevin. I'm like, well, I mean. They... Ke- Kevin? <laughs> no, the the old man at the end. He reconnects with his yes. son, and then Kevin gives him some good advice. I forget yeah. what it was, but I would watch that, and then uh, you'd get all teary-eyed and get on the phone. and you know. But sometimes it can be bad. Sometimes they don't want you in their life, but and you got to respect that. Yes. You know, maybe you messed up when you were a parent, and you know, just try to have a one-sided. Or there's a disagreement. Yeah, just whatever it is, uh, just take their side. You know, you're the older person, and just believe whatever they accuse you of and apologize. <laughs> uh, I I mean, uh, radical acceptance, you can only con- focus on when you can control. So just, you know, your intentions, your uh, your approach, uh, your listening, all that good stuff, and just, you know, really putting out there how you feel and... Hope, I wish, we wish you the best. Uh, I hope that uh, it works out for everyone involved. Yes, I hope that too. And just a quick shout out to um, the other guy. Michael uh, Lu- Lucci's? Yeah, who said, uh, anxious because I don't know what's been causing me to be anxious. We, we get it, man. We covered it. Yeah, sometimes it's just a physical feeling that that has no association yet. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's it's in the back of my mind. Like, I forgot about something that made me anxious. Yes. Oh, oh, my God. We got to get to Caitlin Parks. She's a new listener. She saw me in Albany. Oh. She said, anxious I won't own a zoo one day like I did in <laughs> Zoom Tycoon, or at least my personal farm like Caitlin's Ark. Uh, that's so funny. Zoo Tycoon. <laughs> zoo, zoo Tycoon was my favorite game You played that up. game? I played it all the time. Whoa. I, I was a big fan of Roller Coaster Tycoon. I loved it. No, I only played Zoo. Zoo oh was God. fun because you could, you could put... You made it. First of all, I was a huge animal nerd, so I loved being able to see the animals and stuff. But then you can remove a wall and release animals into the oh my God. people. Yeah, that's what you do when you're really bored. Let me release an elephant. Let's watch a lion eat people. And do you ever mix the animals up? You yeah, yeah, they eat each other. Oh, it was geez. so funny. Like when they ate each other, the whatever it was would turn into meat on a bone. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. Roller Coaster Tycoon, I played when I was a kid, and I was obsessed with, you own an amusement park, mm-hmm. and then, like, you first open the park. It, talk about anxiety. You first open the park, and you put a roller coaster in, and then- People are already walking in, right? People are already walking in, and they get complain. Yeah. Where's the bathroom? And then you're like, oh, God. And then before you know it, there's puke on the ground. Because <laughs> they're riding, there's no bathroom. They just puke on the ground because they rode the roller coaster, so they're like- Oh my God! So you put the bathroom in, and there's still the puke from before. Oh man! So you go, you got to hire a janitor. So yeah. You go to a tab, you hire yeah. a janitor, and he comes and sweeps up the puke. And you're go, like, oh, I got to leave with the boring stuff first. Uh, I got to have a janitor before I have. What'd you call your roller coasters? I, I, I there, the, I couldn't think of any. Just default names. The I'm Andrew. focused on on other things. <laughs> I'm focused on the big picture here. 
I can't focus on those details. I got to focus on the puke and, and the, the toilet and this guy's salary. And then they can play. There's no benches. I got to put those in. Uh, it, there's a lot of complaining in that game. There is. But if you have a zoo, uh, half the complaining's gone because it, it's animals. It makes you appreciate when you probably went to a zoo. You're like, oh wow, this lot goes into this. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know? They got to buy the uh, the expansion and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there was some expansions for mine too, but when I went to a park, I'm like, I know this price is every dollar goes to a put thing, and you know, I'm looking at and seeing if Zoo Tycoon still exists. Uh, probably uh, there was a 2014 Zoo Tycoon. Oh my God, we got to get to uh, uh, Alex Wessel Couch. He he wrote us about um, the dressing as Han Solo earlier. This yeah, is, this is like in November. He wrote imposter syndrome. I'd like to hear if you lads had any thoughts on this. And we have thoughts on this all the time. I know we got two minutes left, but we could try to try to cover it. Yeah, uh, I you you're the big one. I got a big imposter uh, syndrome. Every it hits me like once a week too, where I'm like, oh my god. It a big thing I heard recently. I haven't. I heard this like this week. So oh, this is good. Uh. I'm going to blank on, I think it's Malcolm Gladwell, but it was in an interview somewhere. Going by what I'm about to say, you should be able to find it. Okay. But uh, whoever was in the interview says, the problem, a big part of imposter syndrome is you're a big fan of what you're pursuing, so your taste is more advanced than your skill. Oh. So you and I, for example, we've been watching, listening, and consuming comedy our entire lives. Yes. Way longer than we've been doing it. Yes. So our taste is growing at the rate, much, uh, at a much faster rate because it's been since we were born. Yes. But our skill level is have however much work we put in. Right. So it, you have to have this patience, which is hard, especially when you love the thing that you're chasing. Yeah. So... Keep in mind that... And with social media. Yes. you see the people you and grew you, up liking post even more content. Yes. You're like, oh my God, this is amazing. And the people around doing, you. Because they've been doing it for 30 years. Yes. Uh, so, it's like the microcosm of me and Fumi. Exactly. You know, Fumi once. Uh, he had imposter syndrome. He's like, man, if I can only be six months ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now he's just... I And in, he, look at Fumi, for example. He, he was looking at that and now he's... Gone, he's gone to great lengths. He's doing great things, and then one day he'll be running on Fumis. So, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, all right, we got thirty seconds left. All right, well, do, do it, man. You're doing the right thing. And uh, I had one more thing. Just about keep impossible. keep putting in the work. Keep putting in the work. Yeah, and uh, stay on social media, man, and just focus on how far you came than where you were, and don't compare yourself to anybody else. But well, that's our episode, everyone. Thanks for writing in. <laughs> Uh, Thank you so much for listening, and uh, we'll put all the uh, plugs in the uh, the up top. Yeah, shout out to Metal Neo Freak who sent us something we didn't get to, but uh, check out Steve's thing and check out Steve's uh, hour and, and uh, our Patreon five dollars a month gets you four episodes, and we talk about the pre lead up to Steve's thing. And go see uh, Andrew live; he's running all over town and all over the country yeah. and the yeah. planet. All right, uh, we're out. All right, cool. All right. Uh... <laughs> Heart starts beating really fast. And I could take, and I could take I'm like sweating and trembling. Oh, me too. Am I gonna, am I gonna die? Yeah. And I could take, and I could take That's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> it's good with some butter. <laughs> A uh, lot of fun comics out there. Uh, I had uh, some really... Uh, Jeff Norris was my host and uh, Zach Wyckoff. And uh, they were both really good uh, comics. And uh, Oh, yeah. They sound, just, like, they sound like Brooklyn street names. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. The corner of... Uh, <laughs> Norris and Wyckoff. Wyckoff. That's where the subway is. Yeah. <laughs> what stop are you? I'm uh, off to Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> uh, and then from there... From Cincinnati, I flew to Los Angeles uh, and uh, did the James Corden Late Late Show. Yeah, yeah. I don't know which one we teased about. Was it on the bonus or this one where we talked about you doing it? We did. We talked about it on both. I first oh, yeah, told yeah. it on the bonus to be like, it's looking like this is going to happen, but I'm not going to say it on the regular ups yet. 
Yeah. And then uh, on the Anthony DeVito episode, I was like, it airs tonight. Uh, oh, my which God. Which it did. The panickers retweeted, and my mom and dad called me. The I got to tell you, I want to know about that. But uh, <laughs> I definitely... Uh, uh, I want to know Dr. Dev's diagnosis, but uh, I know that she called you and your mom did. But uh, I was so nervous to watch. I, I you know, all I did was read the comments. Uh, they're, they're positive. They're I, what I've heard. I haven't looked. But you haven't even looked at the comments. I haven't looked at the comments. The panickers. I want to do a major shout out here. It was incredible the amount of love and support from. Uh, so everyone that's listening, thank you so much. I know uh, there were so many that that shared it on their own before I shared it, yeah. which was, I mean, uh, there was so I, I I can't name everybody, so I'm just going to say thank you in a blanket statement because I don't want to leave anyone out. It's like your um, album thanks. Yeah. It, yes, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone that's ever listened, thank you because you shared it. And, and Andrew. <laughs> uh, and uh, it meant... Uh, the world to me and uh thank you everybody for doing that what'd you feel uh, the second time as opposed to your first with colbert uh i mean experience wise before i i there's anxi- a lot anxiety wise there's a lot to un- oh, okay so it's a whole unpack. okay let's let's unpack it let's get the uh box cutters out here <laughs> but i want to know what your parents said oh they were like Steve did so good. Yeah. He had a backstage thing, and and did you watch it? Did you know? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm too nervous. It's on YouTube. Yeah, I figured that. <laughs> I figured it would be on there. They told me uh, it's on YouTube like five times. They, they wanted you to watch it. <laughs> uh, I, I retweeted the link. I know they, you They did. watched I it because I retweeted did. it. <laughs> They watched it because they, they saw my post. They're like, we found it on uh, this site, Andrew Chavone's Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the internet. Um, well, thank you, uh, uh, Andy and Deb. Uh, and, the, and the comments have all been positive, except there the, there was one that said he didn't talk about his so, name. So, And then there's a reply to that that said, check out his album. It's all about that. Yeah. And then, I don't know. It's well, so annoying. What's really annoying about YouTube and I love YouTube. I'm on it all the time. Is if you go on mobile on YouTube, I remember to share it, I went on mobile real quick. And it automatically shows you the top comment. Oh, yeah. You don't get a choice. No. And it said, I can't believe, like, I can't believe he left that Captain America joke uh, in, on, on the table? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he didn't even touch it. And it's like, the set starts with the guy introducing my album that has a Captain America joke as the title. Right, right. It'd be weird uh, to just repeat that. Yeah. <laughs> I, this guy has an album before he was super. And hey, then everybody. that's my first lo- punchline. Yeah, I look like I, uh, Captain America before he was super. And they're like, we just saw no, that punchline. Yeah, yeah we it's already like the brown, that. brown Pants. <laughs> <laughs> he had an album called Brown Pants. My album was called Why Do Women Go to the Bathroom in Groups? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Women be shopping. <laughs> Track one. Women be shopping. Hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that'd be like if Hot Pockets was the name of his album. Yeah, yeah, I would give it away. Yeah. Uh, think... Or Diarrhea Pocket. Diarrhea Pocket. <laughs> uh, Ooh. Uh oh, sleep. <laughs> Why is that sleeping? That's damn right. Who's canceled? Oh, it says memory card full. Fuck! Uh. Fuck! Fuck! I thought that had a lot. Oh, I don't know if I got all of our jokes. Oh, no. Let me, I'm gonna, I'll be right back. Hold I'll on. hit stop.